essentially you can divide equations into two classes. On one hand side, you have algebraic equations, and on the other hand, you have functional equations. Example of algebraic equation is very simple. Take this equation 2x equals 1. This is an example of algebraic equation, and solution of this solution, very simple, x equals 1 half. That's the solution of this simple algebraic equation. That's what we do in school. A functional equation is, a, is an equation that involves functions. So for example, maybe the equation says find all functions f that satisfy some condition. So I have to find all functions f that satisfy some condition. If the condition involves not only the function, but also its derivative, then this functional equation will be classified as a differential equation. So a differential equation is simple, at first place an equation. But it's an equation when we're looking for functions as opposed to for numbers. And the condition that the function is supposed to satisfy involves not only the function, but also the derivative of this function. That's what differential equation is. And in general, a differential equation at first order at least when the only one derivative is involved so is of this kind or of this form, y prime equals f of x, y. So for example, you have this differential equation, y prime equals y divided by x. That's one example of, the, of a differential equation. And notice that this is a separable differential equation because you can say, okay, this is equal to, well, x and then times one divided by y. See, so, the, so let me rewrite this. So the differential equation is of this kind or of this form. Y prime is equal to X times one over Y. And you can separate this differential equation into two pieces, so to say, or two parts. The first of which, or one of which is a function that involves X only. And the other one is a function that involves Y only. So this is an example of a separable separable differential equations. So I'd like to tell you how to solve those today. Those are really simple to solve. Another example of a separable differential equation is this one, y prime equals y. So what this differential equation says is we're looking for all functions with the property that derivative and the function are the same. So exponential function has this property. And here's an example of a differential equation that's not separable. It's not the product of the function of x and the function of y. That I just gave you this differential equation, but in fact, this is one that's very, very difficult to solve. And in fact, there's no elementary function that satisfies this differential equation. To solve that, you have to use power series and so on and so forth. We won't be doing this. Most of the time, we'll be looking at several differential equations, so something like this. Let me give you the most, most, simple, the most simple one would be this one. So to get some practice, what this differential equation says, it says find, find all functions y with the property that such that derivative of this function is zero. Well, that's what this differential equation says, and it's super simple to solve this because, well, let's say this is my y-axis, let's say this is my x-axis, and what function we can take so that this satisfies this differential equation. For example, take this constant function two. So take this constant function two, y equals two is a solution of this differential equation because the derivative of constant is zero. Take another function, y equals three, constant function, y equals three. So this is a function, y equals three. This is the constant function, y equals two, and so on and so forth. And in fact, you can take any constant c, any number c, and consider the function y equals c. y equals the constant function c. This is a solution of this differential equation in a way that's the most general one because every solution of this differential equation is of this kind or of this form. So it's a collection of all constant functions. So that's a differential equation, and this is differential equation, and this is 
an analytic solution of this differential equation. Sometimes it's difficult to come up with this solution of this differential equation, and often we'll be looking at something that's called a direction field. Direction field. So direction field of a diff, or sometimes called the slope field of a differential equation. We'll look at the x y coordinate plane. So this is the x axis. This is the y axis, and we'll choose some point. And I and let's say we're interested in the solution that goes through this point. Okay. So what this differential says, th th this equation says that well, the derivative of this function. <laughs> at this point has to be zero. So the slope or the tangent line to the solution has to be a line like this, line element. And then we do this for many points. For example, for this point, the same idea, I would draw this line segment which is with slope zero. This is the slope with slope zero. And then we choose another point and we draw this line element, which is another point, we draw this line element, another point and so on and so forth. And that if, if I do so many of them, that will give me that will give me the slope of the direction field of this differential equation or the slope field. Let me just let me this person. Okay, so this is a very simple differential equation y equals zero. So this is differential differential equation differential equation. An analytic solution of this differential equation is analytic means that there's a formula for a solution. So very, that was a very simple equation, but analytic solution of this is this collection of all functions y equals c. But also when we can't find this analytic solution, sometimes it's often to look at the direction field. And that will give you an idea of how the solution will look like, even though you don't have the explicit formula for all solutions of this differential equation. I use Mathematica to to draw this, and I put here the code in case you're interested. You can, or you can also do the same thing in MATLAB or Maple. And there's so many. So I use Mathematica, and uh, this is the code that generates this direction field. Absolutely, don't worry about this. We don't have to even. I just wanted to mention that in case you're interested, you can have a look at that. So two things, given a differential equation, on one hand side, you can find all solutions analytically by giving me formula, or if this is difficult, then this is sometimes, well, people use computers to generate direction field. But the meaning of this is that that will give you the idea of how every solution of this differential looks like. See, you just follow this pattern, and that will give you collection of collection of all collection of all constant functions. So analytically, this means that the set of solutions of this form y equals c, where c, we can say where c, c is any constant or any number, any constant or any number. Okay, very simple differential equation. Another one, also very simple. What does this mean? It's a differential equation, and it says that we're looking for all functions with the property that if you look at the function, the slope of this function is going to be two. So this is one solution, another solution, another solution, there's so many of them. So we can solve this differential equation in two ways. Either we can provide a solution analytically, or we can look at the direction field of this differential equation. Let's see. By the way, this is a separable differential equation. So let me mention how we could solve this kind of a method this is. And we can say, okay, so let's say dy. Another way to say derivative is to say dy. Derivative of this function y with respect to x or maybe t is equal to 2. So we did actually the same thing when, when we did integration by substitution. We multiply formally because on the left hand side it's not a number, it's a symbol. But we can multiply formally both sides of this equation by the dx factor and that will give me dy equals 2 dx. And then when I integrate both sides of this equation, I'll get integral of this equals in, integral of that. So integral of, just admit this person. Okay, so integral of y, integral of y is just y plus c, we'll use this a little bit later, and this is equal to 2 times dx. 
Okay, question for you, so that I know that you can see this side. What is this integral on the right hand side, 2 dx? What is this integral equal to? Very simple. Two dx. Perfect. Perfect. This is exactly all, all what people say. Exactly. Very simple integral. So y equals 2, which, 2x plus c, where c is any constant. So this is the, ge this is the general solution of this differential equation. This is the general solution of this differential equation. Also, we can solve this if we can't find this formula, maybe the differential equation is difficult, then we can use computer uh, to generate the direction field or slope field. And in this example, I don't even have to use computer because the slope field is going to be very simple. So how does the slope field is going to look like? Well, if this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. If I pick any point and let's say, I don't know what the solution is, but I like to know what is the tangent line to the graph of the solution that goes through this point the tangent line, the slope has to be equal to two. So the slope is going to be, this is a slope two. And then we choose another point and we draw this point, this line element, line segment, very short line like this. And we do this for many, many points. And I won't be doing that many, but when I use, again, I use Mathematica and that will give me the direction field of this differential equation. So the differential equation is y prime equals two. One way to solve this differential equation is analytically by providing me this formula. This is the explicit formula for all solutions of this differential equation. Or we can also solve this differential equation geometrically by looking at, by constructing this direction field. So the direction field looks like this. And what it means is, that will give you an idea of all solutions because all solutions, you just follow in this pattern. All solutions, they have to look like this. And indeed, those are the functions 2x plus c. Okay, very simple equation. I took this, this is, I took this photocopy from our textbook. And here's a differential equation. So this is the differential equation is y prime equals, well, x plus y or t plus y. We can use either, maybe we can use t for example. So let me just say again, y prime equals, I can use x or t, okay, let's say t plus y, plus y. That's a differential equation. Okay, it's not separable. So the method that we just mentioned doesn't work, but let's try to construct this this direction field, how do we do so? Okay, so we, what we can do, think of this. So we have this equation y prime equals f of t comma y. So this is in this specific example, that's just t plus y, t plus y. Okay, so on the right hand side, this is derivative of this function at a specific point. So it's just a slope. So let's see, this is the right hand side. And let's try to find the position of this x, y plane, all those points with a, a given slope. Maybe I want to see when the slope, when the slope is zero. So I want to see when the slope c is equal to zero. So I have to look at this equation t plus y, t plus y is equal to zero. So, so in other words, t equals t or y equals negative t. Okay, how does this line y equals negative t looks like? y equals negative t, this line is going to look like this y equals negative line is going to look like this is a straight line. Looks like this, looks like this, 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 this. Okay, so this is the, this is the, we can call this the isocline. This is the line. And then what we do, if you take any point on this line, for example, this one, then you can draw this line element like this. 
and you can take this point, you can draw this element like this. This point, the slope is going to be zero. This is going to be the slope. And this one, this is going to be zero as well. And take this point, you know what the slope is zero. Take this point and so on and so forth. And take, for example, this point that will give you the line element and that will give you the line element and that will give you the line element and so on and so forth. Okay, so this corresponds to, this isocline corresponds to C equals zero. Okay, let's see what's happening when, let's maybe, we want to know this, when the slope is one. We want to find all those points with slope equals one. Okay, so let's do the same thing. So that was C equals zero. Let's do C equals one. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to look at the right hand side of this equation. So I have t plus y, t plus y equals one. That's the slope. One is this the slope one is 45 degrees. This the slope zero would be this. So the one we just we just did, slope zero, and slope one, that will be one, slope one. Okay, so let's see what this line looks like. This is the y line y equals one minus t. Okay, so let me sketch the graph y equals y minus t. This is the t axis. This is the y axis. For example, when t is equal to zero, then y is equal to one. And if, let's say, if t is equal to one, okay, if t, a question for you, if t is equal to one, what is the corresponding y? Zero. Perfect, this is exactly zero. zero. It means that this line is going to look like this. So this is the isocline that corresponds to, that corresponds to the slope one. So it means that if you take any point on this line, the slope is going to be one like this. Let's see. So let me draw this line, this isocline that corresponds to C equals one, the slope equals one. And see if you take any point, this is the isocline. If you take as any point, this is the I, this is the line element, and this is the line element. This is the line element, this is the line slope is the same. In fact, if you know how to program Mathematica or MATLAB, if you know how to do C++ or something like this, that's how they do this, that's how they generate this, you know? And let's, we, we do one more example when C equals negative one. So the isocline, this line, this is, this, see, this line is not a solution, it's an isocline. So this is the isocline C and it corresponds to all the slope would be one. Let me do a negative one, just one more, for example, if you have no time, if we have more time, we could do more of them. But I want to do one more. Let's do C equals negative one. So I'm looking at the right-hand side of this equation, T plus Y, T plus Y equals, and then I want the slope to be, see, this is slope one, and negative one would be, if you look at this line, y equals negative x. If you look at this function, y equals negative x. This is exactly the slope negative one. The slope of this line, slope of this line, slope of this line is negative one, is negative one, because that's a function, y equals negative one. Okay, so now let's, draw this isocline that corresponds to c equals negative one. So t plus y, this is the right hand side of this equation, t plus y, and that's equal to negative one. Okay, so I have to draw this line. So y is going to be equal to negative one minus, minus which variable? t. Perfect, this is x and minus t. So let me just draw this line very quickly. How does this line look like? This is the y-axis, this is the t-axis, this is the t-axis, this is the y-axis. For example, when t is equal to zero, when t is equal to zero, then I have negative one. And if t is equal to, let's say, 
maybe negative one, then this is negative one, positive one, zero. Okay, so this line is going to look like this. Okay, so let me draw this line over here. Maybe this is negative one. Okay, now very nice thing. For now, this is just an Isaac line. So that's an Isaac line that corresponds to slope C equals negative one. And now for any point here, you have the slope negative one. That's how this line element looks like. That's how this line element looks like. That's how this line element looks like. Very beautiful. And see, in fact, just doing this simple, this simple construction, we have discovered one solution of this differential equation. Look at this function. On, on look at this function. This function is exactly, so what is this function? This function is y equals negative one, negative t, negative one, negative t. Okay, you can check that this function is one solution of this differential equation. And you can, you can construct this, you can draw another Isaac line that corresponds to c equals maybe two, and c equals seven, and you can do more of them, and that will give you the direction field of this differential equation. So the differential equation was, again, was y prime equals t plus y, and let's say, okay, solution to differential is not unique. So I can sketch one solution looks to me like this solution look like this. Another solution looks to me like this. And there's another solution and they never touch each other. And not, not even that, they never cross each other and they are not even tangent to each other. They will be asymptotically close. So what's going to happen is they will approach asymptotically this solution and this one will approach asymptotically this solution, and this one will do the same. Something like this we're going to have. And this is another solution. And this is another solution. And let's see another one, and so on and so forth. Many solutions. And now let's say you have differential equation, and now because you have many solutions, you can see, okay, but I want to get one specific solution. And to do so, I have to impose one condition. So we are looking for a function now that is a solution of this differential equation and also goes through a given point. So in, in other words, y of zero, y of zero is equal to, let's say one, for example. Then if you find general solution of this differential equation analytically, it will depend on C, then you will find the right C and that will give you one specific solution. That, see, this solution will be asymptotically, as, asymptotically approaching this solution, but also will be going through this given point of interest, zero, one. Okay, so something like this, when you have a differential equation and one condition, something like this, often it's called initial, I've, IVP, initial value problem, because you specify differential equation as well as one condition, and that will give you uniqueness, because without this, you'd have no uniqueness. There's many, many functions, but once you specify this additional condition, that will give you exactly one function that satisfies not only this differential equation, but also go through this given point, and that's the unique solution. <coughs> of this differential equation. Okay, so, well, I did, we just did this example, so I don't want to repeat everything again. So let me just say a few words about application of differential equation from our point of view. To, I'll do one very simple example to model a population. And the underlying idea is going to be the following one. If, if we have a population of some individual, so population is, if we have population of some individuals, maybe people <coughs> or bacteria or any population of any individual, then one principle that everything is going to be based on is that if the population is big, initially, when the population is big, then the population will, will grow more faster than when the population was very small. Start with a population of two bacteria or five bacteria. Maybe you do something in a lab, in a lab 
and you have a population of five bacteria. And then you come up to mm, another day tomorrow and maybe there's 20 of them and maybe another day there's 60 and so on and so forth. But then when you start with the population with 1,000 of them, then another day will be probably a very, very large number. So let's try to model this situation, this observation, using differential equations. So I took this from Wikipedia. Population is a number of individuals and so on and so forth. OK, let's say we do want to do some mathematics. So let's introduce some function. And let's say that y of t this is going to be the size of the population at time t. In other words, the number of, let's, let's say, for example, bacteria, or maybe number of people. So y of t is going to be a number of people at a specific time t. Because today we have, maybe here in Irvine, maybe there's this number of people, but maybe 20 years later it will be different. The population will be changing. So what the population will be function, the number of individuals will be function of time. The population will be changing, will be function of time. The size will be function of time. So let's say y, y of t is the size or the number of individuals in this given population at the time t, because the number of individuals is a function of time, will be changing. Okay, so, so let's see, this is my t axis. <coughs> Excuse me, this is my t-axis. And I call this t because we can think of this as time. And let's see, of, think of this function y. So maybe this is today, or maybe this is a time t0. And I have some function like this, like this, like this. And then the population will be growing more rapidly. And maybe then something like this. So something like this, that's the function y of t. So now the question will be, what does this mean, the derivative of this function y? If you take the derivative of this function at this point, for example, if you compute the derivative, the derivative is slope. So if you compute the derivative, that's the slope, and it's much more steeper than if you compute the derivative of this function at this point, because this tangent line is not as steep as the first one. So what does this mean? The derivative essentially means the change of population how rapidly the population is changing. Is it changing that extremely rapidly? Like in here, so many people, so many new individuals more in the population, or maybe doesn't change as rapidly as this point. So derivative would be the rate of change, either the grow or decay, because people can die. <clears throat> so either, so I'll say just the rate of change of individuals in the given population. That's what means derivative of y prime. And now we are only one step to very nice and differential equation that people in biology use all the time. And that's the exponential growth. That's the, I think that's the most simple one or the most basic one. And the idea is the following one. On one okay, so on one hand side, I have y of t. So what is this? This is the number of individuals in a given population at time t. So I have the size of this population. The bigger the population it is, the faster will be changing. So on, on the other hand, we ha I have this, this idea of change of size of this population at t. And what we just mentioned is that the population and the rate of change of this population will be proportional to the size of this population. Another way to say this is y prime is proportional to y, and we use some constant of proportionality, k, for example. And this is, see, and now what we have, we have y prime equals some constant k times y. Okay, what is it? This is a differential equation. This is a differential equation. So, this is a differential equation. So let me show, first of all, let me show you how to solve this because it's separable. You know, it's a separable. So it's going to be simple to solve this differential equation. And then let me give you an application on a very simple context. This differential can be used to, to model some population. Okay, so first of all, let's solve this very quickly. 
So <coughs> let's say I want to rewrite this equation that way. Let's say y prime is the same as dy. Okay, now we are thinking of y, y, but as a function of t, y of t. I can say y of x, but the reason I want to use t because we can think of this as time. And this is the time, the, the, how the population is changing over time. So I can say y prime is the same as dy over dt. And that's equal to k times y. The same thing I just rewrote as the, and now remember what we, when we did u substitution, we did this idea that we can think of as multiplying both sides of this equation by this factor dt. It's a form of multiplication because this is symbol rather than just a number, but we can think of this in that way. So when I multiply both sides of this equation by dt, that will give me dy equals k times y times dt. And this is a separable differential equation. So it, mean, it means that you can, everything in terms of y, you put on the left-hand side, and everything in terms of t in a constant you put on the right hand side. So this is y, and I want to put this y here. So let's divide both sides of this equation by y. So that'll give me dy divided by y is equal to k. That's a constant of proportionality, k dt. Okay, let's integrate the left-hand side and the right-hand side of this equation. So I'll get integral of this and then integral of that. But integration is a homogeneous operation and k is a constant. So you can pull this constant outside of this integration symbol that will give you this. Okay, a question for you now. What is the integral of dy over y? Excellent, exactly, this is ln of y. So ln of y equals k times, okay, integral dx is x or integral dt is t. So t and then plus c. <coughs> okay, let me just say one thing. This is the trick that we'll be doing. This is any constant c. Consider this function ln natural log. So here's how the function look, ln looks like. The ln function looks like this, like this, like this, like this. This is the ln function, ln of the natural log function. Perfect, ln of y. Okay, I'll make this person. The trick is that we're going to replace the c by something. If you take any constant c, if you can any constant c, if you take, for example, if this is your constant c, then the constant c will be actually equal, if this is your constant maybe a, then you can find the number x so that this is ln of x. Or if this is negative b, then also you can express this function as an ln of something. So in other words, I can assume that ln is, that constant c for a moment is positive, and I can take ln of c. Okay, now let's apply the exponential function to the left-hand side and to the right-hand side of this differential equation, of this equation. So now I have e to the log of this absolute value of y, which is just absolute value of y, and then this is equal to e to the k times t, e to the k times t, well, times e to the ln of c, which is just c. And remember, c was positive in here, but now you have absolute value on the, on the left-hand side. If you skip the absolute value function, then you have this y equals the constant c times e to the k t, and now c is not necessarily positive, but any real number because we have skipped the absolute value function. So the differential equation is this, y equals k, and the most general solution of this differential equation is the function y of t 
y of t is equal to c times the exponential function k t. This is the general solution of this differential equation. <coughs> Ah, uh, okay. The trick is to replace this, you can replace this C by ln of C, by the natural log of C. And you can do so because the log function looks like this. If you think of any constant C, then this is equal to ln of some number, ln of some number. And the trick is because exponential function to the x plus y is e to the x times e to the y. So that's why we have this multiplication in here. Okay, so we have this differential equation and we know what's the meaning of this differential equation. This differential equation will model our population. So we have this differential equation and we know all solutions to this differential equation and solutions are of this kind or of this form. Okay, so now let's do this example. Well, I think we did this some times ago, but let's say we have very simple population and we have the population of maybe okay so let me do, draw this timeline so this is the timeline so this is time on this axis t and maybe this is now and now is may the fourth okay and this is one month later so April the 4th. And then this is one month later, March the 4th. Okay, so this is, no, we, this is today. We, this is what we do today. This is now. And let's say that now you have 18 mice. So this is now, but two months, ago there was only so one month ago two months ago there was only three of them okay so that's that's our population two months ago do you have three mice and then now i.e two months later we have 18 of them okay so let's try to model this situation this is the pieces of information that we want to be encoded in our differential equation somehow so let's say that y of t, this is going to be the number of mice at time t. Okay, so again, we have this differential equation, y prime is the change of the population is proportional to the population itself. So we have this differential equation, that's the one that we just mentioned in here. This is the differential y prime equals k times y. You know, I'm using population of mice, but it could be bacteria or any population really. And what this differential equation does is it models the situation. And let's, so let's see. So we have this differential equation. What is the general solution of this differential equation? We just mentioned the general solution of this differential equation is, well, y of t, is equal to, let me see, is equal to c times e to the k times t. c times e to the k times t. Okay, so now I have differential equ equation and the general solution of this differential equation. But now, Basically what I want to do is I want to come up with one specific function, which is going to be a solution of this differential equation and also satisfy some condition. So the function, so here's now. So here's now. And so this is May, today is the fourth. Okay, and today we have, how many mice we have 18. Okay, so, so today we have 18th, and two months later, 
<laughs> excuse me, two months ago, so one month ago, two months ago, we, did, did we, have on, we had only three. So at time zero, at time zero, we had only three of them. So the function I am looking for is going to look like something like this. The function I'm looking for is going to look like something like this. Okay, this is going to be solution of this differential equation, but there's many, many, many solutions. So first of all, we have to come up with the constant C. This is the initial condition. And then we'll have to come up with what is the constant of proportionality. Okay, so let's see. We know that Y of zero, we know that Y of zero is equal to, well, C, you have the formula times E to the K times zero. E to the zero is one, so C. But on the other hand, what is Y of zero? At zero, the function was equal to three. At zero, the function was equal to three. So meaning that the constant C has to be equal to three. So now I have this, this function Y of T equals C, which is now, I know it just C. This is three times exponential function to the K times t. Okay, let's use another piece of information to come up with this constant k is supposed to be. But I know that when t is equal to 2, so in other words, y of 2, y of 2 is equal to 1, one, one on one hand side this is 18, on one hand side this is 18, but on the other hand I have this formula. So this is equal to the y of 2. Excuse me, I want to put 2 here. So y of two is going to be three times the exponential function of two times k. But on the other hand, y of two is equal to 18. So this is equal to 18. And if you divide both sides of this equation by three, then we get that e to the mm, 2k 2k equals 18 by 3. And if I take the natural log of both sides, then I get 2k equals ln, ln of 6. So k is equal to half of that. k is equal to half of that. ln of 6 divided by 2. Okay, ln of six divided by two. Approximately, this is equal to zero. Uh, approximately, this is equal to zero point nine. Approximately, this is equal to zero point nine. So the function, this function, is equal to y, is equal to three, is the constant, and that's the initial condition. See, this is the initial condition three, times the exponential function to the k, but the k is this one, ln ln of 6 divided by 2 and then times t. Okay, and you can check that, for example, this function at 0 is equal to 3. This function at 2 is equal to exactly what we want, 18. And now the question will be, okay, if, if you have this function, how you can model the situation? You can tell, for example, what was the population one month ago? One month ago, so y of 1 is equal to, you take this t to be one, and y of one approximately seven. The, there were seven mice one month ago. And the question will be, okay, can you predict, based on this piece of information that we have, can you predict what's going to happen in June, June the fourth, one month later? Yes, and this is going to be y of three, and y of 3 approximately, well, you have the formula, so you can say everything about the population of 44. Now, the key point, the one thing I want to mention, this is a very basic model, because essentially it says that the population will grow indefinitely, which is not the case in reality, because there's scarcity, a lack of food, and so many different aspects that we'll have to take into account into this differential equation, 
but we won't be doing those details. This is a very basic equation. And basically what will, it will tell you what is the, how the population behave close to, if you take this close interval from maybe from two to three, from two to three. If you go too far away, then probably this, this is not great because it's too exponential and it will have to include like lack of food and other ingredients. <clears throat> but I wanted to mention this as a, the most basic example of how you can model population using differential equations. So that was a separable differential equation. Let me just tell you how to solve a separable differential equation like this. One method, so example how to solve a separable differential equation. This is a separable because you can see on the right hand side you have product of function that is purely of x and purely of y. <laughs> so this is a separable differential equation. So let's separate everything on x as on one hand side, everything that contains y on the other side. So let's multiply both sides by dx and that will give me that dy is equal to negative 2x times y dx. Okay, so let's say I don't want to see the y on the right hand side, so I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by y. Now I'll get dy divided by y equals negative 2x dx. Okay, so now let me just see. Okay, dy divided by y equals this. So now we can integrate both sides of this equation. This with respect to y and the right hand side with respect to x. But integration is a homogeneous operation. So the constant two, we can pull outside. So this would be two times integral x dx. Okay, what is the integral dy over y? This is ln of y, ln of absolute value of y. And there's some constant we'll take care of a little bit later. And that's equal to minus two. Antiderivative of this function x is x squared by two. So we can cancel those twos. And then we have some constant c. <laughs> so we have ln of y is equal to negative x squared x squared plus c. And now let me do the same trick. Let me do the same trick. I'm going to replace this c by something like ln of c. And I can say that c is positive. For the moment, I can say that c is positive. So when I take, apply the exponential function to the both sides of this equation, that will give me e to the log of absolute value of y, which is just absolute value of y. And that's equal to e to the negative x squared, e to the negative x squared times e to the log of c, which is just c. And remember c was positive, but then when you skip the absolute value function, let me just see if we have everything correct. Yes, when you skip the absolute value function, then you get that y is equal to, I can hold the c first one, so I can say c times the exponential function to the negative x squared. And here c is any constant. So y plus c times e to the negative x squared is the general solution of this differential equation. So let me say again, we just did this, but I have wrote everything so that you can look at this maybe later. Or So the differential equation was this. In other words, that the same as y prime is equal to, is equal to negative two xy, which negative two x, y. Okay, so multiply both sides of this equation by dx. That will give you dy equals negative two x dx. And then divide this, both sides of this equation by y. 
then I'll get dy by y equals this. So now let's integrate the left hand side and the right hand side. Two is a constant, so I can pull this constant outside of integration. Integral of dy over y is the natural log of y, and this is negative two times x squared by two, which is negative x squared, and then plus some constant c. And here's the trick. The constant c can be replaced by ln of c. I can, I can assume that c is positive. That would be simpler. That's fine too, but we can assume that c is positive for the moment. And now if I exponent, take the exponential function of the left-hand side and right-hand side, I get absolute value of y equals e to the this times absolute value of c. And now when I skip absolute value, now I can say that c is any constant, any constant. So this is the general solution of this differential equation. I just draw a couple of solutions of this differential equation. What is the meaning of the C constant? This is the initial condition, so to say. For example, if you take C equals one, or C equals one, this is the solution that corresponds to C equals one. And if you take C equals negative one, that's the solution that corresponds to C equals negative one. If you take C equals two, that's the solution that corresponds to two, and so on and so forth. And this is the direction field this is the direction field of this differential equation, and that would be difficult to do, to draw this by hand, but we can use some software. Like I use Mathematica to generate this. So another example, I'll just say a few words. This is an example, I took this from our textbook, but the same exact idea. So this is a separable differential equation, multiply both sides by dx, and you get this. Okay, and then you get this, and then you integrate both sides of this equation. That will give you the formula for solution of this differential equation. So that's all what I have to say for today. One thing what I'd like to ask you is to, well, to know how to solve a separable, separable differential equation. So we did this example in here. So separable meaning that you can separate the x's and the y's. And basically you integrate both sides that will give you solution to, <laughs> to this differential equation. Okay. So that's all what I have to say for today. In, so I want to stay here in case there are some people if if, if you want to stay in office hours and probably I'll say a little bit more, but absolutely nothing new because I know that you have another class now. I will basically say a little bit more of, of how, for example, I'll solve this differential equation again. 